I've spent six months at Wintertod and reached 200 million fire making XP. After green logging that page, it's finally time to break free and pick up some speed with some other quicker logs. Today, that first log will be my favorite minigame in the entire game, the Mage Training Arena. Now join me as I take on the collection log once more, except this time I will do it one log at a time. This is extreme log. For the Mage Training Arena collection log page, we have to fill in a total of 11 log slots. This consists of the full Infinity Rope set, the four different wand upgrades, the Mage's Book and the Bones to Peaches spell. For each of these unlocks, we'll need to get a certain amount of points in each of the four rooms that are part of the Mage Training Arena. And I'll go more in depth on each of those rooms when we start them. In total, we'll have to get 2,675 points in the Telekinetic Room, 3,075 in Alchemist, 27,500 in Enchantment and also 2,675 in graveyard to fully complete this minigame. All right, let's start getting through these final things from Winterthold. Let's cook this fish. I, I guess I could cook the anchovies as well, but should I really bother? I mean, I guess I may as well. Fuck it. We're just gonna cook everything. We're gonna chill here for a bit in the Osidious kitchen with Hitekip, and we'll see how many levels we get from that. After that, it's questing time. I'm pretty excited to start with some quests and uh, see which ones we can do real quick. A few that can help us with the progression at MTA afterwards as well, as that'll be our next log that we're working on. 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78 cooking, 79, ooh, a big one, 80 cooking. We can now cook sharks, which we're not gonna do just yet. 81. And there's the last level we'll get from this cooking grind. Level 82, I think we'll still get like halfway with the sorties, but like I said, we're saving the sharks until later. Otherwise, we would be able to get like 85 now already with the sharks as well, I think. But I'm just gonna finish cooking the sorties and then it's time to move on. Okay, the cooking comes to an end. That's the last four sorties, halfway to level 83. Beautiful. Now it's time to go and do some quests. Um, the first two that really come to mind are Witch's House to get some more hit points for the graveyard room in MTA and also the feud so we can trade Ellen Morrissane afterwards to get those runes that we will need. Other than that, I'm not really sure if there's any other specific quests I want to do. There's a few that I can't really do because of champion scroll drops. Like I can't do Holy Grail because you can get a giant champion scroll from the Black Knight Titan, which would have been nice because we can get some defense and prayer XP from that, I believe it is so we'll have to figure out which quests we can do which are worth it but i think i'm gonna start with those two witch's house and the feud also <laughs> i feel like i've had 17 out of 21 prayer for the longest time i don't even know why i don't even know how this happened or or what it happened but look now we have full prayer again putting that tome of fire to use with the boosted fireballs let's go max it of 18 with these we got the ball back hey there we go, four quest points, and we get 29 hit points from that. Not really as much as I'd like to have for MTA, but I mean, obviously it would be possible. I'm not sure if I can get some more HP elsewhere, but it is what it is. We are now over 1,300 total as well. Let's go do the feud next. And we completed the feud quest. That is 15,000 thieving XP as well, which gets us to 53, which is perfect for whenever we do desert treasure, I guess. <laughs> Probably not anytime soon. Um, now, of course, we still need to do the actual mini game to, or like mini quest to unlock the runes from Ellie Morrissey, I believe. So let's look into doing that. Well, time to solve a Sudoku, I guess. I think I did it. That was a record speed. I think that took like 10 minutes. I don't even know how long it took, but we did it. We hear the locking mechanism open. Let's find out what the runes are. I mean, I need to get all my cash to be honest to buy all the runes I'm going to need. But we're basically going to buy Cosmics, Natures and Law runes as well. Yeah, we're going to buy all of those. I need to double check which the exact amounts are. But there's this website called OSRS Portal, I think it's called, where there is a Mage Training Arena calculator, which I can also link in the description if you guys 
guys want to check it out yourself. But right now, if I check all of the items from MTA, it's saying that I need about 5,350 law runes, like almost 13,000 nature runes, and just over 5,000 cosmic runes as well. So we do have to get quite some runes, but we have plenty of money from Winter Todd, of course. So let's start buying. So now, of course, we're just going to buy the runes from the normal store. So we're going to buy all the cosmics, all the law runes and all the nature runes. And then we hop worlds. Bit expensive, but I guess it'll be fine. You know, I'm not going to lie. Why am I even doing this? I don't know why I'm buying it from Ellie, to be honest. I feel like I should just go to the major arena because the natures, the laws and the cosmic runes are all lower stock compared to the mage arena in the wilderness. For some reason, I thought this was going to be faster, but presumably I think it's just better for me to go to the major arena shop really i'm just gonna go there <laughs> i don't know man at least we've got the few done right for when we eventually train thieving that guy looks scary let's try a different world hope we don't die on the way there we made it yay okay went to Verok real quick to buy some more water runes as well but that should be all the runes we need for the entire mta log i have all the water runes because i'm gonna cast level 5 enchant with an earth stuff which i also still have to buy so let me go do that and also for the bones to peaches and stuff but yeah i think i should have more than enough runes i think i bought like 1000 extra for each one so hopefully it will be just fine i kind of still want to do some quests though just to make some more general account progress before we commit to the next log because i do want to inch closer and closer to those barrows gloves like i said earlier i'm not even sure if i can complete that anytime soon like the entire rfd quest because i feel like there's probably a few sub quests where i could get champion scrolls and stuff like that so it might have to wait until i actually get the champion's cape which i won't wait too long with anyways but obviously i want to get some combat done before we commit to that one romeo and juliet completed doric's quest completed free bronze pickaxe let's go Cook's assistant completed. And I think I'm also going to start RFD already. So I unlock the bank in the basement, which will be nice to have. So let's do that as well. Remember when I kept that one fruit blast at the start of the series? And I said, yeah, this is a good idea when you want to start recipe for disaster later. And then I just dropped everything when I started Winter Todd. Anyway, it's time to make another one. And there we go. The start of RFD has been done. Now we can enter the room and we'll be doing all the subquests later on. Black Knight's Fortress completed. Corsair Curse completed. That is Demon Slayer completed, but I didn't get the pop-up. What is that? What a scam, dude. Goblin Diplomacy completed. Ernest the Chicken completed. Yay, Missilin Mystery completed. Pirate's Treasure completed. Prince Ellie Rescue completed. Sheep Shear done. That is Shield of Arav completed as well. We did it, we killed the vampire. 45 attack. This changes everything. Witch's Potion completed and we're gonna call it there for the quest grind. We've done every single free-to-play quest other than the three that I want to save for later. Imp Catcher and Dragon Slayer because of Champion Scrolls and Below Ice Mountain because we're gonna do that one when we go to Camp Duzal. But 82 quest points, not too bad. That is some decent progress already. Now I want to build the pool in my house before we start with MTA because I feel like that's something I want on the account. So we are gonna make some staminas just for that. There we go, mark number 10. Now we can make our first staminas on the account, I'm excited. Build pool space, restoration pool, upgraded into the revitalization pool. Now let's go grab the prayer potions as well. And now we have the rejuvenation pool, baby. That is so nice. Look at that prayer and run energy straight back up. Beautiful. One thing I also still want to do that I just realized is get 25 defense because we need 25 defense to equip infinity ropes. And because we're doing MTA for infinity ropes, I kind of want to be able to equip them. Them, you know there are definitely some quests that i can still do to try and get that but i think i'm just quickly gonna slash up some sand crabs and maybe get some hit points xp along the way to get like one or two more levels which will help in the graveyard room as well there we go that's 25 defense and another hit points level as well 31 42 combat as well now we are a bit beefier we can take on the graveyard room with two extra hit points levels and we can equip the infinity ropes once we get them let's do a quick farm run and then it's finally time to actually dive into the mage training arena before we go there, can I just quickly point out that over half of you are still not subscribed to the channel? What's stopping you? Click subscribe right now and I'll consider doing another absurd grind soon. And you don't want to be missing out on that now, do you? 
The first step into the arena. We are now locked in here until we're done. Well, not, not really. We're still going to run to the bank back and forth. But we're going to get everything on the collection log. I'm probably going to focus on one room at a time most of the time. But at the start, I want to do some graveyard room. Switching it with another room by doing graveyard until my HP is super low. And then going to a different room to regenerate. And that way, I want to get enough points in graveyard to unlock bones to peaches. Now, once we have bones to peaches, we can also just do graveyard room the entire way i'm only 53 magic right now so i don't want to start with alchemy just yet even though low alk works the same as high alk in the mage training arena i may as well just wait a little bit so we're gonna start with some telekinetic instead we've acquired the progress hat to keep track of our points usually i would wear it but i want to keep my helm on so that's minus one inventory slot it is what it is sacrifices need to be made sometimes so starting with the graveyard room, this one's fairly straightforward. There's piles of bones that rotate through four different ones that each have a value of 1 to 4, which indicates the amount of fruit you get per cast. And for every 16 fruit deposited in the chute, you get one graveyard point alongside one water, earth, nature, death or blood rune. The basic method is as follows. Pick up four of the two fruit bones and four of the three fruit bones. Cast bones to bananas, which gives you 20 fruit and deposit them. Do the same again with four of the four fruit bones and four of the one fruit bones and keep going through the same cycle. Later on with the bones to peaches, you can also use that every few inventories to eat four peaches, which will heal you 32 hit points. But don't bother casting that every inventory as peaches do not give extra points over bananas. I'm very confused now. Did they actually change this? Look, you used to be able to click the shoot and then cast halfway through and now it stops you from moving. Are you kidding me? Look, okay, Jagex. You need to stop ruining things for your players. I am very much less excited about MTA now because of this. This pisses me off. <laughs> Why would you do this to me? That is ridiculous. I can't believe they've done this. Onto the telekinetic room, one that many people hate for whatever reason. Upon entry, you are presented with one of 10 possible mazes that each have their own solution through telegrabbing the statue within, which requires between 7 and 10 telegrab casts. Every maze completed gives you two telekinetic points, and after solving five mazes in a row, you also get a bonus of 8 points, 10 law runes, and 1000 magic XP. Yo, no way! 55 magic! We can now high alk. That is insane. We're already over 100 telekinetic points. That means we're only 2,570 away or something. <laughs> Looks like the way it works right now is pretty scuffed, but if you wait two ticks and then cast it right before it loads it, you can do it. But then you have to spam click the bones to run back. I didn't, again, I don't know how this change happened or why it happened, but it's a thing now, so we'll have to adjust ourselves to it, I suppose. I wasn't paying attention. I'm having so much fun. Time flies, honestly. I know a lot of people say that they hate Mage Training Arena, but genuinely, it's my favorite minigame in, in the entire game. Also, I feel like my room preference goes against what everyone ever says. Like, my favorite is probably Alchemy, then Telekinetic, then Graveyard, and then Enchantment. I feel like for most people, it's probably the exact other way around. I don't know, there's just something about it, okay? I, I can't describe it, I can't tell you why, I just really like it. Anyways, we're at 500 telekinetic points already. That is like one-fifth of the way done with this room. And it feels like I only just started. Just got 59 magic, 45 combat, 1325 total. We can now cast fire blasts as well, which is gonna be super powerful with our Tome of Fire, obviously. So that's nice. Up to 618 telekinetic points right now. There we go, that's 100 graveyard points already. We're halfway to the points we need for Bones to Peaches. So once we get those 200, I'll just focus on Telekinetic only. And then we'll finish Graveyard later in one go as well. I guess this is the first, you know, somewhat big magic level that we get here. Level 60. We can now actually get the, um, what's it called? Wait, can we? Yeah, we can get the, the Mage Arena cape now, right? If we do end up going there. Not something I'll get anytime soon, I don't think, but it is unlocked. We can also cast Bones to Peaches once we unlock that one from this place. So that's very nice. Many more magic levels to come. Already seven, though. Up to 1,000 telekinetic points already. And we're only on day two. We're grinding. And I'm loving it. There we go. We have the 200 graveyard points for the Bones to Peaches. So after this run, we're camping out telekinetic until we're done with that room entirely. Another 500 points done. Up to 1,500 telekinetic. 
65 magic. We can now finally wield our third age wand that we definitely have. Beautiful. Already 65 and we're still only in the telekinetic chamber. Ooh, whoop. 2,000 telekinetic points. Um, I forgot the exact amount I need. I think it's like 2,650 or something like that. So next update is probably going to be me done with telekinetic room. Chapter 1 at the Mage Training Arena is complete. The final cast of telekinetic grab. And there it is. 2,682 points. That is 7 to spare. We needed 2,675. So we are done with the first room. Beautiful. All the way up to 67 and a half magic already. And it's not like we get that much XP there. So I think it's time for alchemy right now. And we're going to get so much XP there. That's going to be the bulk of the XP we get on this grind. So probably get up to like, I want to say high 70s. I don't think we'll reach level 80. But if we do, that would be amazing. Let me make some room in my inventory just so I can take out as many items as possible from the different cupboards. And it's time to start the big XP grind. And I also have 1.4k laws left from that. So even though I only bought like 1000 extra, we have even more left after that one. The alchemy room is by far my favorite one in the entire minigame. There's five different items that are assigned a different GP value and can be found in a different cupboard each. The goal is to consistently find and alk the item valued at 30 coins. As for each 100 coins deposited in the coin collector, you get one alchemy point and 10 coins, as well as two magic experience per coin deposited, which makes for an amazing magic training method early on. The item's value and position changes every 42 seconds, so it's key to keep an eye out when that happens and to follow the pattern that they're in. By searching the correct cupboards, it will never take more than two searches to know where the new 30 GP item is located and by always carrying extras of each item to alk while searching, you can consistently keep alking the entire way through, maximizing the points and magic XP per hour. Here we go. Time to enter the alchemist's room and we will not leave until we- Wait. We unlocked the new music track called Golden Touch while wearing the golden tench that we touched task I rob Sue with. It's poetry. Beautiful. Oh, there's someone here. There's two people. There's three. How are there three? There's four people here. <laughs> I don't like it when there's multiple people here, though, because it kind of messes with the cupboard. So I'm going to look for a world that is um, empty. Oh my god, we did it. The first 10,000 coins have been acquired. That is already 22k XP. And once we deposit this, it's going to be another 20k XP drop right there. 68 magic. So much XP is going to fly and we love it. And there's a big level again, another 20k XP drop, and that brings us to 70 magic and 50 combat. Getting like 120k XP per hour, so considering that's about 1000 costs per hour, we get like 300 points an hour, and it's like 10 hours of this room until we are done. That's going to be another 10k coins deposited, which brings us to 1,000 points and 73 magic. We can now cast and feeble. We're well on our way to 80. 1,000 done, over 2,000 to go. 1,500 points, level 75 magic. We can now cast fire wave already and wield the trident of the seas, which we probably won't have for a while. I don't know when I'll start the slayer grind on this account, but we probably have a bunch of logs before we can do that 75 magic already that is huge that's already 22 levels since we started here halfway done with alchemy 76 magic and we're already up to 2,000 alchemy points. Man, this is going by way too quickly. I, I wanted to slow down. I want to stay here for much longer. I like it here too much, but this is gonna be over before you know it. 77 magic. Wow. Alg, the rune long, deposit the coins, and that is 2,500 points and 78 magic. We can now wield the trident of the swamp, and we're 54 combat on the dot. Beautiful, man. Probably the last magic level we'll get in this room. I was thinking that we're gonna get level 80 from alchemy, but there's level 79 and we have less than 200 points to go, so we're not gonna get there anymore, but we'll get a few more levels in the other rooms for sure. <laughs> oh my god, it happened! Look, the final alk. 7,500 coins go into the coin collector one more time and there it is. 3,075 alchemy points have been obtained. We're just under 50% on the way to 80 magic already. We entered this place with 53, already so many levels. We're gonna get a few more for sure in graveyard and enchantment, but that is it for the two longest rooms, I'd say. Uh, the last two should be a bit quicker, but still gonna take some time. And we get 1,000 
thousand coins straight into the bank. What a big reward that is. Beautiful. Well, it's time to get some enchantment points now. Just enough to get Bones to Peaches unlocked. And then we're going to grind out Graveyard. So yeah, let me check real quick. For Bones to Peaches, we need 2,000 enchantments. So we're going to get those right now. And then we get the first lock slot. Exciting stuff. Last but not least, the enchantment room, which is the fastest one to complete. It used to be the meta to hop between worlds, picking up the dragon stones and only casting enchant spells on those. But luckily that is no longer the case. We can simply collect a full inventory of a normal shape, cast an enchant spell on all of them and deposit the orbs in the middle. The points are granted upon casting the spell with the base points depending on the level of enchant spell you're using and also granting two extra points if the shape you enchant happens to be the bonus shape at the time. A nice bonus is that for every 20 orbs deposited in the center you also get a reward of three blood death or cosmic runes which stacks up nicely over time and there we go that's 2000 enchantments just what we need for bones to peaches we'll come back here afterwards time for some graveyard room and time to get the first lock slot on this grind here we go select bones to peaches confirm there it is bones to peaches unlocked now time to grind the graveyard room could it be in the mystery box oh fuck off Looks like after the first full hour in the graveyard room, we got about 410 points maybe, so it's not gonna take too long to complete this one either. Probably less than, uh, math, seven hours? Something like that? So even quicker than the alchemy room. Very nice. Plus, it's pretty relaxing as well, you know, just doing the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. It's quite soothing. Other than, of course, casting Bones to Peaches every few inventories to heal up. Unfortunately, because of our hit points being only 31, we don't really get the full potential from the Peaches. Because if you eat 4 Peaches, obviously that heals 32. But it is what it is. Works good enough. Let's keep trucking through. 1,000 uh, graveyard points. Look at all these runes we're getting as well. 200 blood runes, death runes. I guess earth runes as well, but that's less relevant. Nice little bonus that we get here as well. Oh wait, it's going too fast. I'm having too much fun again. 1,500 points. Zoom in. The final milestone in the points before we're done here. That's 2,000 flat. The final stretch is here. Oh my god, we did it. We're 80 magic. Look at that. 55 combat as well. That is so nice, man. All the way from 53 to 80 magic in a matter of a few days. Grinding MTA. Oh, we made it, baby. This is the final inventory of the graveyard room. There we go. 2,475 is all we needed. We even have one extra right there. We are down to the final room. The only thing left is enchanters. It's time to switch up our runes. We got 500 death runes and blood runes from that as well. So that's pretty nice. We have over 2,000 nature runes left that we can keep in the bank. So those will be useful later on as well. The final part of the grind. We're gonna get all the enchantment points. Granted that we do have to do it in two spurts because, well, the points cap out at 16. Thousand, then we need like 25,000 for whatever reason. So we'll get all of the rewards in two purchases, but it's time for the final stretch. We're gonna get one more magic level as well, I think. 8,000 enchantment, we're halfway to the point cap, so soon enough we'll start buying some items. I'm pretty excited to finally get something that I can wear from MTA, it's gonna be beautiful. It goes by so quickly as well, so we'll be done with enchantment very soon. Nowadays that you spam these normal shapes, it's so much faster than it used to be, where you had to hop the entire time looking for the dragon stones and then had to compete with bots and everything. It's so much nicer now. I'm also pretty sure, well, this is maybe me coping but i feel like the yellow shape is the best one to do because i feel like this one right here is like the closest to the middle i don't know if that's true but i think so so i'm, I'm continuously doing the yellow shape it is time for the first log batch purchase. We just reached 16,000 enchantment points, so we capped out and we can't continue on until we buy some of the rewards. So it's time for that. Time for the first tangible rewards after we've already unlocked Bones to Peaches as the first log slot from Mage Training Arena. And I think what I'm going to do right now is get the full infinity set. And then the second time we can get the Master Wand plus the Mage's Book as well. So let's see here. Let's Let's get ourselves the infinity hat, the infinity top, the infinity bottoms, the infinity gloves, 
And last but not least, for now at least, we'll get the infinity boots as well. And that leaves us with all the four different wand upgrades plus the mages book that we can get next time. And that'll be soon enough as well because we're just going to continue with the enchantment room and then we'll get all the points necessary for those. There's all the broadcasts for the full infinity. Let's wield all of it. And that's looking beautiful, man. Oh my god, the infinity robes are so nice. Look at that. Oh, they have to be one of the best fashion scape robes in the entire game that is so beautiful but like i said not done yet let's go and finish the rest of the enchantment points as well so we have 1300 points left after that purchase and we need about 10,800 for the full want plus book so we know what to do let's finish the grind and to get the final magic level as well from this grind there's 81 magic we can now cast wind surge another skill well over level 80 the stats are just looking so beautiful man i'm very happy with what we have on this account already let's finish the final few points in the enchantment room we're getting the hell out of here soon it's time to say goodbye to my favorite minigame of all time. That was the very last cast in the enchantment room. We have 10,800 and that is exactly what we need for the entire Master Wand and Mages book. It's time to complete another collection log page. Here we go. Let's green log MTA. Trade with the rewards guardian. Get the beginner wand first. Upgrade that one to the apprentice wand. Straight into the teacher's wand as well. And onto the master wand as the final one. And then of course the mage's book to complete it all as well. And there we have it. Mage training arena entirely done. Another green log, another journey has been finished. I'm gonna miss it here, man. Again, this is my favorite minigame. There's not a single minigame that will beat this one as far as my enjoyment goes. So, a bit bittersweet once again, but it is what it is. Sometimes you gotta just enjoy the journey and once it's over, look back at it with joy. Let's leave the doorway and never return. Goodbye, my dear friend. It's time to move on to the next page. That's gonna be the one that I was planning to do originally before Wintertold, but unfortunately, it had a pretty high herb lore requirement for me at the time. But luckily nowadays we have 77, which is more than high enough. It's time to go to Tithe Farm. And just like that, another grind comes to completion. It's been very refreshing doing a guaranteed point grind like this after such a long RNG grind at Wintertop. We added 2 days and 10 hours to the playtime and gained 11 collection lock slots along the way. We're going to keep this train moving, more general progress coming in the next episode before we take on the next lock page as well. Grab your spades and see Dibber's brothers because we are going farming. I'll see you all then.